Greetings and salutations, and welcome to Illegitimate Legends, the show where I like to talk about some of the more unusual League of Legends builds. Today we are taking a look at AD Cassidan, and I, I'm just going to say it now, not a lot of people believe that this is potentially viable at all, and it, it just is. It's a good, powerful build. There's nothing wrong with making Cassidan melee-based as opposed to a caster. He doesn't have to be a mage, he also doesn't have to mid, although this build will work in either mid or bottom lane. Never attempted top, and I don't think I want to. Now, the reason why Cassidy works as a melee is because of his W ability. It adds, at max level, 95 additional magic damage onto every single one of his attacks. You can get that fairly, fairly quickly, and with reasonable attack speed, that adds up to a lot of damage. It's almost 100 extra damage every swing. That's a lot. That's the important bit. Every other ability is then useful, but you're not using it for damage. Every other ability becomes utility. Your ultimate, Rift Walk, becomes a means of moving around the map. You can't use it to kill someone, but... Well, you can if they're really low. But you can use it to get to where you need to be. Bouncing around team fights is Cassidy's speciality, after all. Then you've got your other options. You've got a long-term silence as a Q. Very, very powerful. The passive on your W means you've got limitless mana, provided you keep attacking champions, and force pulses slow. It's medium duration, there are longer slows, and it's medium strength, there are more powerful slows, but it will be enough to prevent anybody getting away. Not that there's much of a chance of that anyway, because you've got a flash every five or so seconds, and you should have at least a Phantom Dancer and a Trinity Force for this build. You move really, really quickly, you can get to anywhere on the map you want to be, and you will escape almost every fight as you're seeing behind. They can come in from any direction, and there's always a way out if you know where you're looking. In terms of playstyle, this build isn't so much a DPS in the traditional I'm a run-in and just keep hitting things until everybody dies, right-click to win kind of build. You need some finesse. It's right-click to win, but Cassidy is specifically targeted against mages and supports. People who like casting abilities are weakest because, of course, you can stop them. He's described as an anti-mage assassin by Riot Games in terms of this sort of build, although they recommend more magic resist and attack speed, I've gone for full DPS, which is why it's different to what could be considered a traditional build. So in team fights you want to pick out the person who's far away, the person who's at the back of his team waiting to deal the damage that they want to deal, or who's dealt the damage and is waiting on cooldown to deal more damage, the person who thinks they're nice and, nice and safe because that person isn't going to expect you to flash halfway across the battlefield and cut them up. And even if they are, there's very, very little they can do to stop you. That means, however, that your weakness are teams that stick together. If you encounter a team, and I did a lot in the early days of Cassidy, if you encounter a team that essentially has their entire team at all times within five square feet, you don't have a chance, because you'll go in and you'll die. Every single time. It's... There's, there's almost no way to succeed in that unless they're really, really bad or they're focusing someone else on your team, in which case you have to rely on your team to essentially go into the fight when you do, which didn't happen as much as I would like, causing some unpleasant scores, but then there were other games that caused very, very pleasant scores. I'd play this build in mid. As for runes, you want to be looking at traditional DPS runes, although you could consider hybridizing it a bit and going for more magey spell penetration style runes, because if you get those it makes the W all the more powerful, and it does have an AP ratio on it, so it can get stronger. 
masteries. I went for... I can't tell you the exact numbers, but everything in offense that would assist in dealing physical damage. Every single thing as I want to do. I believe I also took extra damage to minions, but that's a personal preference of mine. Other than that, you want to be looking at taking resistances, so any spare points dump into the defensive tree, because surviving battles is difficult enough as Kassadin. He's a very squishy champion, and so it's very, very hard to do that. Other than that, we have items. Items... I got boots first into magic resistance boots. Those are mercury treads for those of you who don't know. That's because a lot of mages have a lot of crowd controls and being resistant to those is very, very important. So your resistance to their crowd controls, that'll save your life. After that, I went for two or one Duran's Blades, depending on how well things were going. If I had enough money to get two at once, I'd get the two. If I only had enough money to get the one at once, I'd get that. And I wouldn't save money for Duran's Blade from then. I'd start working on the next item, which is Triforce. I work Triforce out of Zeal, but Sheen is also an effective option, as is Frozen Mallet, depending on how things are going. If you're dying too much, you need health. If you want to deal more damage, because you're not getting enough time to do attack speed, get the Sheen. Then I go into, I believe, Phantom Dancer, followed by Bloodthirster, and then from that point it's really your choice. You want to be looking at a good mix of attack speed to keep your mana high, and damage. There are a variety of items that can assist you. Yomu's Ghost Blade's effective, Black Cleaver's effective. Really look to be a standard DPS build toward the end. Have a Triforce in there, but you could very effectively go two Phantom Dancers and two Bloodthirsters and just wreck everyone's day. A high recommendation, though, is more of Malmortius, because Cassidy's passive means that when he takes magic damage, he increases his attack speed based off the amount that he resists, because he resists 15% of all magic damage he takes from his passive. So you get increased attack speed from that. If you have more of Melmortius, you're also going to get increased damage, because nothing's going to stop you taking hits. So when a mage hits you, you will be a lot stronger if you go for a more of Melmortius. That's AD Cassadin. It's a highly effective build. It's a bit untraditional. Normally, I would go for more of a hybrid, but why would I do that? That's not really in the spirit of the show. That's a traditional build. Highly effective. Very few people will believe it works. A lot of people will question you. It's... It's a matter of proving them wrong, I think. This build is very effective. Thank you for watching, and good night.